Hey everyone, Sissy, welcome back to the channel. It's a girl Vermo, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today, guys, I'm going to be reacting to somebody new, and we have baggage, baggage claim, baggage claim, and this is the problem with non-binary. Hmm. Can't wait to get into the video, but before we get started, there's some amazing people watching us for the first time. If you are new to the channel, hello. I'm Vera, I do reaction videos. If you something that you love, why not join Vera TT? Hit the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And with that, guys, let's go! A lot has changed for us, culturally. Some of it has been great, like for gay and lesbian and bi people who were historically rejected and excluded from mainstream conversations, but have now been properly embraced. And culturally, we are sorting through issues on how to accept and help trans people as well. But the rise in a different group of people has been particularly confusing, leading people everywhere to update their LinkedIn profiles and Instagram bios with their preferred pronouns. I'm talking, of course, about the non-binary. That is to say, people people who don't identify as either gender, but rather something in between and prefer to go wow. by they, them pronouns. They, 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 they! And here's a question I'm curious about. Why do people want to identify as non-binary and live outside exactly. of the To answer this, I will be using Che Diaz as an example, since she's the non-binary character on the Sex and the City reboot and just like that. And the character is played by Sarah Ramirez, who used to previously look like this, but now identifies as non-binary. And the show is very clear that they want to take real-life people and represent them as they are. Crying sends a signal that it's sad to be wow. non-binary. That is what I said. I knew the scene was too much, and I told him that. I told him that repeatedly. The whole Che character was like a walking boomer joke that felt so fake to me. Just some hmm. phony, sanitized, performative, cheesy-ass dad joke bullshit version of what the non-binary experience is. It sucked. So let's start with the first why, a rejection of labels. Non-binary people believe that labels like woman, man, husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend are too limiting. They would prefer to exist outside of such antiquated ideas. Che Diaz has liberated themselves from the gender binary. They don't identify as a woman wow. or a man. And the rejection of labels is really a desire to break wow. the rules that come from said labels, i.e. rejection of what it means to be a woman or a man as set by cultural norms. I'm in love with you. I love you too. I am so in love with you. And I want us to be together. Miranda, look at me. Look at me. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? I can't give you anything traditional. That is not who I That's am. That's fine. That is great. And Che is not the only non-binary character on the show since Charlotte's daughter, Rose, too wants to stop identifying as a girl and has changed her name to Rock. Did you change your name at school to Rock? Yeah. Did you do this because your friend Ellen changed her name to Eli? No, it's because I feel like Rock. We're just, we're a little taken aback that this particular child was allowed to adopt a new name without the parents being informed. Rock never gave us any clue that wow. their parents were resistant to their changing identity. There? Did, did you just say there? We are not resistant, Robin. This is a very supportive environment for all children, cisgender, gender fluid, wow. non-binary, trans. Rock is very clear. And in matters such as this, we take our cues from the children. We're talking about a 12-year-old here. Rose would eat ice cream for every meal if it was up to her. Rock. To accommodate her daughter's new choices, Charlotte sets up a day mitzvah so that Rock can participate in the Jewish culture in a non-traditional way. I, I don't understand. What do you mean you don't want to go out there? I just don't, Mom. I can't. Yes, you can. You've been wow. practicing and studying for months. No, I haven't. You have. I'm not doing it. I don't believe in it. I don't want to be labeled as anything. Not as a girl or boy non-binary, a Jew, Christian, Muslim, or even a New Yorker. <gasps> what? But so, wait, you're just nothing now? You're, you're nothing? I'm only 13. 
Can't I just be me? And this is the crux of the non-binary desire. It is to avoid being lumped into any boxes and exist on a plane of their own, where they can exhibit their individuality. So as part of the rejection of labels and rules is also a rejection of crystallization. What do I mean by that? Well, when we're young, we're just full of potential. We can choose to do anything and we can be anything. But as we start to approach our 30s, we start to solidify since we have to sacrifice unlimited potential in exchange for specific knowledge, skill sets, wisdom, and an identity. And there's always a moment where everyone has to come to terms with this realization that they're just not that young anymore and can no longer just be anything. This is normal. This is the act of growing up and getting a solid sense of who you are, what your priorities and commitments are, and most importantly, what your values are. But the non-binary existence is an argument against that, not just in your youth, but in perpetuity, as is illuminated by Che in her 40s and Miranda in her 50s. Miranda leaves her long-term marriage to Steve to be in a non-traditional relationship with Che. Queerness is integral to telling stories, especially for folks in their 40s and their 50s, because a lot of times we position the conversation around sexuality as sort of a settled topic, and, and it's not. Don't hold yourself back. I think it's important that people keep in mind that we are still rediscovering ourselves, and queerness makes space for that. But is it a good thing to be in this place of ambiguity? What's interesting is that the show unintentionally displays the negative side of this ambiguity. What is happening right now? I have no idea. I really don't. I mean, I don't know why I did this. If you were a guy that I had just started seeing, I would never show up at your doorstep with cookies unannounced. Okay, this isn't going to work. What do you, what do you mean this isn't going to work? No, 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 this has to work. Please, please, just let me finish my thought. This isn't going to work if you lock us into those limiting relationship tropes. You know, guys do this and, and, and girlfriends do that. This isn't cosplay. I'm not a guy. You're not my girlfriend and we're not dating. We're not? N what are we doing? Without labels, people lose out on a much needed playbook of how to behave and get some sense of security. But the non-binary argument is that this desire for a playbook and security is a result of brainwashing from society intent upon pushing a way of being that is ultimately oppressive and results in the individual feeling deeply unhappy. So people often ask me, you know, why do you continue to dress as you do, to live as incandescently as you do, knowing that you'd experience violence, to which I respond, why do you continue to lie to yourself, knowing that you'll experience depression? Why do you continue to sacrifice your authenticity, knowing that you're never going to experience happiness? Why do you stay in relationships that aren't serving you? It's because you're afraid, and your fear is holding you back from actually being alive. And you hate me because I template what it means to be alive. You hate me because I show you that you didn't have to clip your own wings, that you didn't have to live an abbreviated version of your joy, that you didn't have to wait for pride, that it could be pride 24 seven, that you didn't have to dress up for the event or the red carpet, that every mother street could be your red carpet. And this is the overarching desire of the non-binary community, and in some ways, trans and queer communities as well, to throw off the limitations of society. Wow. And they are right to challenge these ideas because the rules of any society or culture should never be so rigid that it starts to stifle and oppress the individual, which has been the case for members of the LGBTQ plus community in the past. They have felt rejected and pushed aside into margins of society for their desire desire to live differently. But we should not trade one extreme for another. We should not trade cultural tyranny for anarchy. As always, the optimal solution is in the middle because social norms absolutely serve a crucial purpose for individuals. They give us a rubric, a general guideline on what actions and behaviors we can take ourselves or expect from others. That's why we need definitions like what it means to be a daughter, a son, a husband, a wife, a girlfriend, a parent, so that we can fulfill our commitments, feel secure and loved, and build strong bonds and relationships. And these constraints are crucial for people so they can start to understand the difference between right and wrong. Let me give you an example. We culturally teach children that cheating in relationships 
is wrong, and a betrayal of not just your significant other, but your entire family. This is a constraint that is absolutely necessary, that ultimately helps ensure that people will build strong relationships on trust, honesty, and consideration. And that's not to say that cultural norms are always correct and shouldn't be challenged or changed. A good example is how over the last several decades, we have culturally updated the role of wife from being the sole keeper of the house, kitchen, and the kids to it being a shared responsibility with the husband. But in order to change the current cultural norms, it's first important to learn them, to participate in the culture and understand their significance before we can determine how they should be changed or broken completely to adapt to new times. Like the quote goes, learn the rules so you know how to break them properly. Because it's when we blow up all the labels and take away all the rules that we feel the most anxious and insecure since we don't even have a starting point of what to do next or even what to expect. Miranda doesn't know what her relationship with Che is, so she doesn't know how to behave in it in a way that will deepen their bond. And Che's recommendation of just going with the flow is not sufficient nor helpful, which is why they eventually fall apart. Because there is only so much ambiguity we can handle as human beings, especially when it comes to relationships. And Che herself is a victim of her non-binary status. Well into her 40s, she's living with no limits, smoking pot, partying it up, and generally just doing whatever she wants. But in all this chaos, she is lost and listless. You'll make an even better show. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. You mean it didn't before now, but you're you. I'll be your cheerleader. Oh, Miranda, stop. Let's go. Stop. Let's go. Miranda, stop. stop. Let's go. Stop. stop. I don't need a cheerleader. This isn't a game. This is my life. This is my career. This is my identity. Whoa. It took me 46 years to figure out who I am and then a focus group one hour to destroy me. So I don't need to be all Tony Robbins right now. I got it. I am worried, Che. You've been moping around the apartment for weeks. I'm sorry I'm not climbing out of my deep depression fast enough for you. I, hey, you were the one who said that I should do things to make myself feel better. I didn't mean cameos. I meant leaving the house. I'm transitioning. Yeah, emotionally. Yeah, the old me's f***ed, and the new me's not here yet. And there are two perks of being non-binary that I haven't mentioned that I think play a huge role in attracting people to this type of identity. The ability to demand attention and the excuse of avoiding responsibility. The first is apparent in how so many companies have changed the way they do business, requiring all of their employees to declare their pronouns so as to accommodate non-binary and trans people. But also, every time a non-binary person wow. is misgendered, they have the moral high ground to demand a correction. And if they fail to receive the deference, then they have the perfect story for social media where they can receive plenty of support from allies and other members of their community, all recognizing the trauma of their misgendering. But the second benefit is less obvious, but one mm -hmm. displayed in full force on And Just Like That by Che. So, I just got out of an eight-month relationship with a married straight white woman. I know. I know what you're thinking. Eight months? Wouldn't it have been quicker and less painful to just slam my dick in a car door? <laughs> The good news, she was very sexually adventurous. Yeah, she brought four people into our bed. Yeah. Wow. Me, her, her husband, and her son. What? We were both kind of in the same place. Yeah. She was confused about everything. And I was confused about why I was f***ing her. I have to go. Sorry. I know we fancy that it's funny about this. <laughs> Not funny! What kind of a person gets up on stage and makes jokes like that about what happened between us? A stand-up. That's what I do. I get on stage and I make jokes about the bad things that happened in my life. I'm a bad thing that happened in your wow. life. Wow, it's all bad, Miranda. That f***ing point of I comedy. I never thought of you as a bad thing that happened in my life. Until now. Now I do. Jay. Hey. You okay? Guess who that was? Yeah. I figured. Why am I always having to remind people who I am? I'm so tired of having to explain myself to people for years. Or go on stage and perform some version of myself that they'll find acceptable. I'm fing over it. <sighs> sorry. No, you know what? I'm not sorry. Good. Don't be. Own it all. All of your feelings. There's nothing hotter than a strong, envy person. 
The non-binary existence is presented as this novel willingness to constantly discover themselves at their own pace and blissfully accept all the unknowns that come with that. But whenever there is a challenge from another person about their selfishness, cruelty, or immaturity, they can use their being lost in the unknown as a shield. Because after all, they're just trying to figure their stuff out. And isn't that a good thing? Like, oh, he, she, they, them, oh, please tell me which box to check. <laughs> but you know what I say? I say better to be confused than to be sure. Because, right? Wow. Because when you're sure, then nothing can change. And we all have something we need to change. I mean, some of us have something we really need to change. And so change, do it. Change it. Change that shit up. You're not happy with who you are. But that's be confused and to be sure. Change it. Change. Change your address. Change your job. Change your, change your mind. Change your gender. So I just want to say to all those people out there who are so fucking sure, all those people who make TV and who write for newspapers and magazines and who run news shows and everyone who wants us to be alone and sad. I just want to say, suck my dick. And in this way, being non-binary serves as a mechanism to avoid taking responsibility, avoid consequences, and most importantly, avoid growing up. <laughs> Oh my god, this is hilarious. Like, people actually refer to themselves as non binary. <laughs> so, I am binary, they are non binary. And they also want to be referred to as they, them. Because it even makes sense. Like, this absolutely makes no sense to me. And she was like, better to be confused than to be sure. Like, she said, they don't want to take responsibility. Look, how did we even get here? How did non-binary become a thing? How did we get here? Because I am confused. This whole thing is messed up. This whole thing is bullshit. Doesn't make any sense at all. This whole thing is messed up for real. Hmm. They, them, they are calling you. They want to speak with you. Just one person, I like. They are there. Like, they are calling you. Does that make sense? When they call themselves non binary, they are neither male nor female. Oh gosh. <laughs> they don't even know you're of in this world. Like, different madness every day. Every day, different bullshit. One stuff or the other it is well what do you guys think about this video drop a comment down below if you enjoyed this video as much as i did give it a huge thumbs up and if you're new to the channel join vira cc please subscribe button below turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops i'm just guys i'll see you in the next one bye